Do you like action movies? Well, I might have one for you this weekend at the box office. 28 years later, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Linda Hamilton reunite for Terminator Dark Fate. Now, James Cameron didn't direct this one. He is a producer, though, so you can see his hand all over this latest version. And you know what? I have to say, I thought it was a pretty decent follow-up. If you don't know anything about the Terminator movies, don't worry, because they basically ignored three sequels. And this picks up right after Terminator 2 Judgment Day, which was, let's just be honest, that is an action class. The 1991 T2 Judgment Day is like top tier stuff. This one's not going to come close, uh, but it actually does a decent job trying to further the story. And you know what? Arnie has some great one-liners. He's back in fine form, but the ladies steal the show in this movie, namely Linda Hamilton, who falls into this role so well. She crackles on screen when she appears. Also, Vancouver's Mackenzie Davis, who plays this augmented human soldier from the future. You see her right there and Colombian newcomer Natalia Reyes. They steal the show. Now, the writing is predictably clunky. If you're not up to speed or familiar with things, don't worry. There's lots of expository dialogue to uh, get you, um, well, in the know. But action abounds in this surprisingly solid popcorn flick. Some of the CGI gets a little cartoonish at times, but it is loaded with action right from the get-go. And um, I'll say this, it's better than the other sequels, but that's not saying much. So, for Terminator Dark Fate, I'm going to go with three out of five. Okay, now one movie you must check out, Pedro Almodovar is back. The Spanish auteur has a beautiful film right now called Pain and Glory, starring Antonio Banderas, and there's some interesting real-world parallels with the character. Take a look. Lucrecia, mi mujer, va, mi ex-mujer, que nos estamos separando. Sí, se lo conté. No sabe que eres tú, sabe que estuve con un tío en Madrid durante tres años. Y también se lo he contado a uno de mis hijos para animarle. <laughs> Con el tiempo le contaré que eres tú. Es eh, muy cinéfilo y no me lo perdonaría que no se lo dijera. ¿Tienes pareja ahora? Sí. ¿Y tú? No. This is such a lovely film. So at the Cannes Film Fest, Antonio won Best Actor for his role as an aging filmmaker who's suffering from uh, some physical ailments. And uh, this movie is actually Spain's 2020 Oscar entry for Best International Film. Now, the character that Banderas plays is a filmmaker, and he has this tenuous relationship with an actor in the movie right there. That mirrors the real-life relationship between Almodovar and Banderas himself, because when Ber D Banderas went to Hollywood, they had a major falling out for years. So some really interesting parallels here to what actually happened. Gorgeous, sumptuous visuals. I love the look of this movie. Penelope Cruz plays uh, the character's mom. So there's all these flashbacks to his, his childhood in the 60s and then in Madrid in the 80s. It is gorgeous. I love the production design. The writing is so sharp. Such rich, beautiful characters in this movie. And Alberto Iglesias, he actually did the music. So the score is just very sweeping. And I mean, you look at it here. Almodovar, he's made a ton of amazing Amazing films. This one actually is a little bit pared down and scaled back from some of his wackier ones. The pacing may be a little bit slow for some people, but I love this film, and it's sure to get a lot of Oscar buzz when it comes to the international category with the foreign language movie. So my verdict for Pain and Glory, four out of five. Yeah, definitely check that one out. All right.